Today's content may look a bit different, but I promise it will all make sense. The item I unboxed is a trinocular microscope. It has a camera that can stream whatever is visible through both eyepieces via an HDMI output to a monitor or a video capture device. Over the last couple of months I noticed that such a tool would be a great asset and would open the door to more interesting content. You may remember the time when I snipped off a surface mounted capacitor when I tried to fix a SuperSocket 7 motherboard. Or the time I tried to solder a pin to my slot 1 motherboard to be able to measure the CPU core voltage. In both cases, I wished for better visibility of the area I was working on. Or the Arduino projects where I put together simple circuits on a breadboard which are capable to measure temperature and voltage. And if you don't want your prototypes to stay in this state forever, you need an expert like PCBWay. PCBWay offers a wide variety of services including standard and advanced PCB prototyping and fabrication, flexible PCBs, 3D printing, CNC machining and much more. I am an absolute beginner when it comes to PCB design. And I really like that PCBWay has a lot of information on their website including a help center that can get you up to speed in no time. Once you're done with your prototype and PCB design, you can jump on PCBWay's website to get an instant quote including fabrication and shipping. There are many possibilities to customize your order and give it your personal touch. Don't be afraid if you're not familiar with the enormous amount of choices. Each option provides helpful information that will guide you through the process to place a successful order with PCBWay. And if you sign up as a new customer, you will get a 5 US dollar welcome bonus. Check out PCBWay.com to learn more and turn your prototypes into real products. So I started to look for possibilities how to make it easier working with tiny electronic components. So I did what I usually do when I look for opinions, user experience or a specific answer. Search on Reddit. More often than not, I find what I'm looking for and this time it was no different. One user suggested to check out a video from Scotty Allen, the creator of the Strange Parts YouTube channel. He goes over all the features of this microscope in depth and explains why he loves it so much. After watching his video, it was clear that this was the microscope to get. You will find a link to his video in the description. If you're interested, the cost of this microscope is between 300 and 350 US dollars, including shipping. Considering that it comes with everything you need to start, the price seems reasonable to me. I think it's a perfect fit for a serious beginner. After I was done with the assembly, which was not that difficult by the way, I immediately tried to get familiar with the microscope. I spent more than an hour to get used to the microscope and learn how to align the focus of the eyepieces with the camera. But I couldn't. Either the camera or the eyepieces were not in focus. I noticed that if I elevate the camera a little bit from its fitting, the picture became clear. So the solution for me was simple. Add a vulcanized fiber washer between the fitting and the camera. The camera gets the job done, showing what is going on under the microscope. But don't expect miracles here. If you're looking for high definition and razor sharp video streams, you will be disappointed. The optical eyepieces on the other hand are fantastic, although it took me some time to get used to them. Finally, I just want to mention that in some occasions, parts wouldn't easily fit together. And that is mainly because of tiny screws you have to loosen a little bit. Those screws can be overlooked quite easily. Other than that, there is nothing else I have found so far and I am very happy with this microscope. So what will be its purpose? As I mentioned before, I think with this microscope I can create better and more interesting content. I want to use this microscope mainly for modifications, but also to repair old hardware. By now nobody should be surprised that some of the old hardware I have is either broken or misses a few bits and bolts. Just wait a few minutes and I will show you three new projects that I have lined up. Another reason why I wanted this microscope is because I would like to learn more about electronics. I am an absolute beginner by the way, but I wouldn't mind learning and understanding more about this field. And who knows, maybe one day I will be able to repair the one or the other device and create advanced circuits. And here are the three projects I mentioned earlier. The first project is this 3DFX card, which is actually a donation from a viewer. A Voodoo 3 2000 with PCI interface. Thank you very much Michael for sending this over. I really appreciate it. I never had a Voodoo 3 before. 
3DFX cards got quite expensive. Such a card can easily set you back by more than 100 US dollars. The card works without issues, but it is missing a capacitor next to one of the memory chips. I don't know if this is a problem, but the capacitor was there in the first place and probably has a purpose as well. There is also another capacitor on a lower memory chip that has a few scratches. Let me know in the comments if you think I should replace the scratched capacitor. Or are you an advocate of don't fix it if it ain't broken? The next patient is actually on life support and the oldest hardware I have. It is a 386 motherboard with an AMD 386 DX40. Unfortunately, the dreaded barrel battery leaked and in the process destroyed some of the copper traces. I probably have to remove some components like the keyboard connector, remove the remaining acid and attempt to repair the traces. I don't even know if this board is in working condition, assuming I can fix the traces. Please let me know if you have some tips on how to remove the battery acid. I have seen people recommending diluted white vinegar or lemon juice, but I have never done this before. And finally the third project. We have a Pentium 3 1GHz for the socket 370. This one misses a pin. I tried to find out what this pin is used for and I believe it has to do with signaling the chip to enter or leave the sleep state. This may actually be very interesting. Does the chip work without this pin? If it works, will it be able to enter the sleep state? Was someone trying to make sure this chip never enters the sleep state? I guess we will find out. So the choice will be yours. What project should I tackle first? There will be a poll in the community tab of my channel. You can vote there or let me know in the comments. And this is all I have for you today. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel to not miss those upcoming projects. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.